tyrants like Gavin Newsom just don't get it. Making good people defenseless does not make bad people harmless. Yeah. Instead of using the words gun control, they should use victim disarmament. Yeah. And if you believe in the Second Amendment, and if you believe that good people deserve the best tools to defend themselves and their families, then you should be a member of San Diego County Gun Owners. That's us. San Diego County Gun Owners makes it easy to connect with the community that's fighting to defend and restore your Second Amendment right. So become a member today. It's only 10 bucks. Go to sdcgo.org slash join to become a member today. Nine new members just today, Dave. Fantastic. Where were you? Uh, it was actually, uh, we sent out, uh, I crafted an email and said, hey, uh, I crafted two emails. One was, uh, hey, you're one of the 10,000 people, literally 10,000 people that are on our list and have never been a member. And here are all the things we've done. What else do we have to do oh, to get a little you to guilt join? trip? Is that, I see where you're going. And then the other one was, uh, hey, uh, uh, well, that was really it. That was the email. New. Uh, there was another email, but that's not. There are eight brand new. Well, wasn't the other one? If you don't join, I'm coming to your house. I got a guy named Dramisi. He's going to come to your house. To your house. He's going to cut you off at the knees. <laughs> He's going to Tanya Harding you. Ooh. Joe's here. How cool is that? Long time no see. Joe is here. Yeah, I try to get in here every uh, six months uh, or so. Yeah, whether you need to or not. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Dave, but you know uh, Joe is a watch nerd too. Oh, did you no. know that? Yeah, I think I did know that. Yeah, yeah. just think I knew that. Yeah, I discovered those a while ago, and uh, I yeah, way got way. Into What's it? the one? B R I N T I N Brightling. Brightling or Brittling or five hundred dollars for one on Facebook marketing. <laughs> wow, I don't know. I don't either. I, I don't know if I'd trust. <laughs> I don't know if I'd trust that. You don't trust Facebook marketing. <laughs> is that a Tijuana half, Facebook? <laughs> no, half my stuff is Facebook. This is okay. So this is by far my. Fa- this is, is that the new one? My favorite. No, it's not new. This is by far become my favorite watch. What is it? I wear this thing three out of four days when I'm wearing a watch. What is it? It's a Tissot two thousand. Oh, um, I seen a T-Soat in there, and it came with a box and everything. I want, This thing's about 47 pounds here. No, I know. I don't know how you wear it. I'm and surprised you And I don't... absolutely love this Good thing. God almighty. That's a piece of equipment is what that is. It tells time. Yeah. It's, Jeez. It does. <laughs> the I think, workout. You want to see hey, your heavy. right arm versus your it's left. It's heavier than a gun. It's not even the most – it's 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 fine. It's not uncomfortable, but the most comfortable one I have is the Citizen Diver that I really, really like. But, God, I wear the heck out of this thing. I love it so much. It's so good looking. Anyway, what are I'm we trying, about here? I'm trying not to do that. See, I'm tr- – I, I, What, become a watch nerd? Yes, I don't want to. I just had a conversation with uh, Sean who owns uh, – he's on our board and he owns a uh, – he owns a, a shop, you know, where I take my Jeep, and I said, "Yeah, I'm thinking because you know, all I'm, buy, all I'm buying anymore are automatics, which means that they wind. Oh, that's good looking. Four fifty. They wind by the motion of your. Oh yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, well, did your box do that? Because you, they, you can get boxes that. Okay, so that's where I'm going. So I said, I told him, I said, you know, I have all these automatics now. I'm thinking about buying. A, they they make like these cases, and inside they have. Uh, you, you put your watch, you wrap it around the stinger, and, and you, you mount it there, and then it spins a mm-hmm, little bit mm-hmm. so that it keeps your watch wound. And he was like, well, you know, there's like this whole school of thought, and you have to do this, and it has to be this kind, and it may or may not be better to let – I mean, and I said, this is the worst hobby. This is the stupidest hobby anyone has ever had. So this is such an enormous waste of time and money. This is absolutely ridiculous. And he said, yeah, you're right. And then we went right back to it. So anyway, this is the watch winder I'm going to buy. This is my next watch. That's 100 a good bucks. looking. 100 bucks. 100 bucks. 100 bucks. For that? I don't understand. I wouldn't trust. Well, if you go there with a big stick, nice working solar Seiko SSC 493 Men's Chronograph, typically wear and tear, glasses scratch-free, serious buyer only, Santee. We're seriously at the next gun show. We're going to have some watch tables. I, I, I don't know why you don't. Yeah, I think watches and guns go hand in hand. Anyway, okay. let, all right, let's get talk off about the, guns. Yeah, let's get off it. Let's talk about guns. Joe, thank you for being here. We're going to talk to you a lot today. You're welcome. Good. Alicia, how are you? Yes, sir. Doing well. Fantastic. Did you were you at the range this weekend? I've been I've been there pretty much every day. It's a <laughs> it's it's uh, you, if you if, if you haven't stepped into a gun shop in the last couple of weeks, yeah, it's much different than what you remember. What's the deal? <laughs> What do you mean? Middle East. Ah, all of that going I was on. Just people. Say, all the I've, ammo's I've gone had on. a number of um, rabbis that have come in. Mm. Never thought they'd ever have a need. Never thought they'd ever be doing what they're doing. They're coming in. Yeah. People are afraid. 
and they're looking for training. I was just talking about that on Bob yeah. Siegel's show last week where yeah. that uh, particular race of people have been skyrocketing with gun Ab- sales. And absolutely. then the other one, too, was uh, Maine. Maine's gun sales have been through the roof, too, right. since that situation. Mm-hmm. So You know, I don't know how controversial this statement is. <laughs> let's, let's well, see like it. you're going to worry about let's, a controversial Let's see how statement. it goes. Um, you know, we've done, we do, you know, first time shooter experiences with shooting social. So I've been approached by a lot of groups, mm-hmm. a lot of groups, mm-hmm. uh, you name it, you know, LGBT medical, um, you know, Jewish. Well, okay. So religious groups, a ton of religious groups, mm-hmm. Catholic, Protestant, mm-hmm. Jewish, mm-hmm. um, you know, you name it, um, every different church, whatever. I mean, dozens and dozens, no, no, no Muslim or Islam groups. <laughs> Not one. Funny thing. Not one. They're not worried about their safety in any way, apparently. Mm-hmm. Isn't that funny? There might be a reason. <laughs> well, don't, again, don't know how controversial that statement is. Have you checked the border is. out lately? I'm just telling you my personal experience. Yeah. <clears throat> and I know you ask a lot of questions. Speaking of, uh, OC, Orange County, up in Dana Point, if you go to orangecountygunowners.com, you will see that we're having a town hall on safety, on uh, crime, And that is coming up uh, this Thursday. For all the information, I want you to go to orangecountygunowners.com. You'll have guest speakers. We're going to talk about the Second Amendment, what you can do to keep yourself safe. Um, Congratulations, by the way, to Stephanie uh, from Outdoor Women Grand Opening in Imperial Beach coming up. We're going to talk about that. And uh, thank you all for listening. And next Tuesday, make sure you vote. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Is that next Thursday? We better talk about that, too. I didn't know it was on your list of things. Hey, if you own a gun in California, you should have an attorney that specializes in California gun laws on your speed dial. Because if you ever have legal matters that involve firearms, you need California firearm lawyer John Dillon. If you have questions about red flag laws, gun registration, gun transportation, or maybe you need to know that your guns are California compliant, our trusted firearms attorney is John Dillon. John specializes in California gun laws. Put his number on your phone right now, 760-642-7150. That's John Dillon, California firearm lawyer. Again, 760-642-7150. So I want to start off, uh, before we before we kick into the interview, I want to do a big thank you to Ken Campbell and uh, 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 Gunsight for their extremely generous donation of a three-day pistol class for our gun owners symposium extremely cool the winner was extremely happy and uh it just it, it's, what what a, what an awesome thing to do what a great way to introduce folks to uh gun site and what a great uh generous thing for gun site to do for san diego county gun owners and gun owners radio so thank you so much our guest today is and one of the reasons joe's here is to do an awesome interview joe's a a um, an alumnus is that right of, of gun site is that where you are an alumnus Alumnus, no, alumni, alumni. Is that where you are? You've been to gun. Let's just. Alumnus. Joe's been to gun site. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted him to uh, come on and talk to Ken Campbell. Uh, Ken, are you there? I'm here. Free America calling. <laughs> Welcome to the People's Republic. <laughs> hey, Joe. We call it family members. Gun site family members. That way, we, it doesn't get all complicated with alumni or alumnus, or they're just we're all gun site family. Good, so I don't have to learn. I don't have to learn Latin to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to perfect, just, just to see what uh, year you, the gas match is, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Just got to learn Roman numerals. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. We're, I'm looking forward to uh, to uh, to this interview very much. Well, thanks for the kind words about the donation we made, but uh, you know we're. Uh, um, it's like Ben Franklin said when he was speaking of the Republic, if we don't hang together, we will surely hang separately. When we can support conservative groups like yourself, we certainly want to do that. So um, so that's great, too. And you mentioned the, the Gunsight family, too, which uh, I, I, it really, really is. It's, it's hard to describe that unless you've been out there, I think. But, um, you know, when we went out and shot the gas match this year, you know, my wife went with me. She shot her first match. Uh, I guess, which uh, went really well. It was a little bit stressful for her. But, um, again, just the way everybody is out there, uh, you know, her uh, her red dot broke, like, the second uh, second stage, I guess. And uh, we were able to go to the gunsmithy at lunchtime. He swapped it right out, got a new one on there. She was all set for the rest of the day. So um, it just really is good out there, but I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to tie up our interview time with uh, my cool gas match experience. <laughs> but, and make sure people understand gas match. 
means gunsight alumni shoot. <laughs> <laughs> There's that word again. See, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's a family thing. But um, but hey, Ken, Rich had some uh, good ideas about uh, you know what something to ask you about or talk about today, and um, you know the because uh, you were around in the olden days with uh, with Colonel Cooper, and uh, you know we were wondering what it was like there in terms of civilian self defense because uh, you know Gunsight I believe was the first school to teach uh, civilians defensive firearms use, and. Um, continues that because i know i tell my students uh because i'll reference colonel cooper uh during class and uh one of the things i'll say is yeah he's the reason we all don't shoot like game, like james cagney anymore and um <laughs> which is funny for the old guys but like nobody else knows who james cagney was but um can you talk a little bit about what it was like um you know in terms of being a civilian and, and defensive gun use and everything before gun sight before colonel cooper well you know everything back then was kind of uh uh, you, you clutch your support side hand up to your chest, and you bring your pistol out at, at kind of waist level and, and uh, the Applegate Fairburn kind of method, um, and it was okay. But uh, Jeff Cooper started studying things, uh, especially out in the Big Bear Lake, California area, in the different matches in the Southwest Pistol League, where he, was, he studied who was winning and why. And that's where the people like Thel Reed and Jack Weaver and, and so on were participating and winning. And that's where the, the early days of the mod, what we call the modern technique of the pistol were developed. And he got it into where a two-handed grip, bring the pistol up to eye level, use those sights that John Browning and Sam Colt cunningly put on the top of those pistols and uh, helped you uh, get better hits. And it, it, the, the modern technique continues to evolve. Um, Jeff was an interesting man, uh, a curmudgeon in many ways. I mean, he was very set in his ways. He, uh, he was uh, very philosophical, very learned in history. If you'd sit down to talk with him, he did not like to pass the time of day. He did not suffer fools well. But if you wanted to talk history or politics or shooting and hunting and Africa hunting, um, it, it was a, a glorious conversation to have. So oh, okay. <laughs> just uh, fighting over the microphone here. Um, so how because he started out with the uh, with competitive shooting right and here in Big Bear, I know he was real instrumental in the, what, the early days of USPSA and all that. And um, how how did he make the uh, transition or what interested him in say defensive shooting, which is much different than match shooting? How did he make that kind of right. transition? Well, that when he started doing the competitive shooting, and it was and it was Ipsic. He was he's the was the chairman emeritus, I believe, of Ipsic. Uh, he because he was the the founder of it. But he started doing these shooting matches up in Big Bear Lake, and uh, and it was it was a rather than bullseye. This was more combat type shooting, and that was the impetus for all that. Um, and it, it it grew from there, and it's grown exponentially since then. He. Uh, we, we stand on the shoulder of giants here in, in, in what we do now. And there's many great younger instructors out there. But much of what they are teaching is a derivation of what Jeff Cooper developed. I, I think uh, um, I, I think it's, it's absolutely amazing to me how much he actually did do and how different shooting was, um, you know, particularly pistol shooting. Uh, you know, I think that... Oh, it, it, it was one It was one-handed... You know, just thrust the gun forward and uh, kind of uh, bore sight or uh, barrel sight the, the weapon and, and try to get the best hits you could. And, and you can learn to shoot like that and be accurate, but it takes a tremendous amount of practice, a tremendous amount of ammunition, um, a lot of determination. But then, but if you use those silly sights, and now we've got these things called pistol-mounted optics, if you learn to properly use those and, and uh, manage the trigger properly and so on, gosh, your hit ratio goes way up, and, and uh, that makes winners and we, in gunfights. We, we take that for granted. I think anybody that's, that's uh, you know, spent any time, if you've taken a, a, a class at all, I think that uh, you, you kind of take that for granted that it's just always existed, but it hasn't. It hasn't existed. It's definitely oh, no, no, evolved, what? even in the last like well, well, in in my lifetime. And I'm so young. I'm a spring chicken, you know. So well, in '79, I went to to the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy, and at the three yard line, it was one handed at waist level uh, for your your first six rounds. Uh, 
three pairs. You, you weren't to use both hands and you weren't to use the sights. And, uh, you, know, you use your first shot, what the, what the old trainer was that taught, taught us. You looking at the paper, you use the first shot to see where it hits and then uh, adjust, adjust accordingly. Well, that's not the way it works in gunfighting world. You don't, you know, there may not be any reaction on that first shot on a, on a human. Unless you're Indiana Jones. <laughs> right? I mean, that guy. And the guy in the sword. That's the guy right. with the sword. The guy with the sword. Yeah, yeah. I, got a, I got a question. So uh, uh, Glocks, in, in the uh, the trigger guard, the front of the trigger guard is like is carved out, and it actually has little little, <laughs> little X's. Alicia's already laughing. I think she already oh, knows I, what I question know I'm going to ask. I know where he's going, yeah. And that was, I don't think a lot of people know this, because that was that's designed to put your, your finger on, on the front of the trigger guard. And I don't think anybody teaches that, but they still put it on. No. You know, Glock still has yeah, it. it, what, it what? It's still there, and that goes back. Smith & Wesson did it uh, years ago and, and so on. It uh, The CDI factor is very high, the chicks dig it factor. <laughs> um, it, it, it looks cool, but what what we see if you watch a shooter, when they shoot on that second shot, third shot, and so on, they're flexing that support side index finger that they've got up there, which – decreases your accuracy and increases your time uh, between your shots. So if you just get the proper grip and get that uh, support side hand uh, index finger down below the trigger guard and get a proper grip on the gun, uh, it enhances your abilities. That, that's our experience. Just, just about the only person I've ever seen do that grip well is going to be Lena. I've never seen anybody else do well with it. Yeah. yeah, and and then now there's there's a and, and I mean this in the kindest way. There is a freak of nature there, just like her dad. <laughs> they those people are just absolute Terminator machines when it comes to shooting. Um, they they are stunning. I've met them both, know them both. I'd say that if she was standing here with me, mm-hmm. but oh my God, can she shoot? <laughs> Well, I remember reading about that. That I guess that was popular in the maybe late eighties, early nineties with uh, with competitive shooters, and then they kind of got away from it. Because um, well, that's the way Don Johnson did it on Miami Vice. Yeah. What do we want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. They, they used the high Sabrina there too, mm-hmm. if I remember right. <laughs> yeah, they did. That's correct. There's there's a full Sabrina and half Sabrina. The full Sabrina is where they got the muzzle elevated by their face with their finger on the trigger. And the half Sabrina is when your finger is not on the trigger. <laughs> okay, there you go. Because, uh, yeah, because you're. we still get, every once in a while, I'll have students in class that come in shooting that way with their finger up there. And, and we try to, you know, encourage them to, to fix that grip a little bit. Because um, I think your grip is a lot stronger if you've got all fingers down there around your, your you know, primary hand fingers like that, mm-hmm. as opposed to using the, the, a finger up on the front of the trigger guard. Absolutely. The more meat you can get in contact with, with the uh, the receiver of that gun, the better off you are, so that there aren't any gaps and, and less wiggle room. You know, it, shooting is physics and geometry. But when that gun goes bang and you start to get that perceived recoil, the gun's going to move a little bit, which causes a sight to move. So the more meat you can get around that gun to, to lessen that movement, the more accurate you're going to be. Yeah, and you can actually see if you watch a shooter that's um, that's got a loose grip, if you could see it loosening up after like the second, third, fourth, fifth shot, and you'll see those shots trailing off in a direct kind of in a line going away. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, a lot of that again, that kind of stuff is more likely if the fingers and things aren't where they're supposed to be. Yep, ab- absolutely. And you know, when when you suggest that to folks. Hey, try shooting this other way, and they look at you and say, "This is the way I've always done it." <laughs> Why did they pay the trainer to teach them then? Why did you give them, whether it's gunside or whoever? Why did you give them the money? Hey, have you ever wanted to get a pilot's license? Yes. Well, here in San Diego, pilots can fly almost every day, which makes San Diego one of the best places to learn how to fly in the world. You can learn to fly with San Diego Flight Training International. Check out these deals just for gun owner radio listeners. One hour of ground school, one hour of flight with an instructor. Yep, you get to fly. Normally $400, but listeners get it for $350. Getting started is easy. uh, Give them a call at 858-569-1822 or go to learn to fly with SDFTI or just call them 858-569-1822. All right, so we're back with... Ken Campbell, CEO of Gunsight Academy out in Paulden, Arizona. 
All right. So um, where, we, where do we leave this off with the uh, the training? And um, we were talking about how, how training has evolved over the last, you know, 10, 20 years. And I know at Gunsight, uh, there's a lot of different, like, new classes I've noticed, especially uh, I was looking at the, at the coming calendar for um, – 2024, and you guys have really added a lot there. Can you talk a little bit about that, Ken, and what's going on at Gunsight? Absolutely. Yeah, the, the modern technique evolves, and, and we see some of the uh, stuff on the Internet. Foolishly, we read the comments, and, uh, you know, people say we're the Southwest Dinosaur League, and we only shoot 1911s and force you to stand in a weaver stance. And oddly <laughs> enough, none of those people have attended Gunsight. Um, <laughs> what we do uh, we teach whatever teach you to shoot whatever you bring. In in 2011, we taught the 25th anniversary of the Glock pistol at the request of Glock. So we've been on board with a variety of pistols. The point is, we're here to teach you to shoot and save your life with what you what you brought to the party. Um, one of our more popular ones right now is called Tactical Concealed Carry Pistol. We had to throw in the word tactical not to increase the price, but people thought that was our CCW class. And this is five days. You have to have your 250 pistol, your level one pistol class first. But this is uh, vehicle defense. It's uh, moving with your family, how to you know guide your family in and out. It's a lot of concealed carry. It, it's rapidly becoming one of the fa- uh, most favorite classes here. The tactical medicine class, getting beyond shooting, it's based on an active shooter model. What happens? You defend yourself. You secure in place. You're waiting for the cavalry to come and help. What are you going to do to keep your partner alive for an hour? So we're, we're more than just shooting. We've increased our carbine classes. We're now we're doing a day, called day zero for pistol and carbine. There's 10 million new gun owners. I believe it. And God bless them. Many of them are realizing what Jeff Cooper said. Just because you own a piano does not make you a musician. So they're getting training. So we'd get more and more people that had never shot on a firing line before, that had never really handled a gun. Almost literally, can you help me open this box and take this thing out? So now we do a Sunday class preceding our carbine and pistol class as an option that's slower paced and gets you some understanding of what's happening. And that way Monday, when we really open the fire hose of knowledge to you, things are much easier for you to understand and those classes are really getting traction yeah seen it's and it's great too that you guys adjust that way and you kind of look at okay what's needed out there what do people want and then you accommodate people which is uh, a really cool way to do it because that's what i've been looking for um in more classes you know because shooting a lot out here but you know you only do so much in the on a square range and that, and that kind of stuff's good you need that but um, it's nice to find things that are more of a variety. Like the, uh, I'll be out in March for the Brave class, which oh um, yeah, Bli- ballistic response against violent encounters. Again, more uh, more vehicle defense. More uh, there's a lot of push and shove in that one. Uh, uh, th- there's a great deal that's that's real world is what's that what's that's based upon. A lot of close quarters stuff. Yeah, and that kind of stuff, I mean, I think that's what's needed out there, too. It's um, Because, you know, we have uh, things are happening out there and things are getting more, not to be paranoid about stuff, but, you know, it is kind of a sort of a more dangerous environment, I think, that we're all in. And, uh, you know, Absolutely. And especially out here in California where we're, we're fighting, uh, you know, we're fighting the government as well as everything else. And, um, you know, I don't know if you if you heard about SB2. It's the uh, the reaction out here of California to the Bruin decision. And essentially, if they're successful with that, you know, it makes it um, it makes it un, it makes you unable to carry basically anywhere out here. So, you know, on top of things getting more dangerous, it's making it harder for um, law abiding people, you know, to protect themselves. So. So right, yeah. well, again, I, I spent 35 years in law enforcement. All that does is make it easier for the bad guy uh, to come in and do what they want to do. That's all that does. And by, by taking away these, these God-given rights that our citizens have and their ability to protect themselves and their family, it, it's quite simple. It's wrong. Well, that you know, our producer, Rich, uh, the producer for Gun Owners Radio, is really uh, a, uh, a fan of, of changing the term from gun safety or gun control or whatever to victim disarmament. He, he really is pushing for that. Oh, that's good. That. I know, right? I'll, be, like I'll be stealing that. 
Victims, I'll be that's all it is. That. So you support victim disarmament laws, not you support gun safety laws or you support even gun control laws. You know, you support victim disarmament laws is kind of his, the idea of using that term. Or I'm not in favor of victim disarmament laws. No. I'll, I'll tell you, let, let me go back to another question. I'm getting a little bit off topic, but not. Um, pocket pistol is one of our favored classes right now. You may say, oh, I always carry a five inch government model or a full size Glock 17 or whatever, but we all know that's not correct. You're carrying a SIG 365, you've got a J frame and so on. So we also offer a course in just pocket pistol uh, so that, uh, again, that's probably what you got on, got on today if you know, you've got that CCW. You know why that's very timely of you to say? is California, you know, California's got this ridiculous victim disarmament law um, that uh, uh, it's a, it's a, the roster, our stupid safe handgun roster, so-called safe handgun roster. And so we haven't been able to add any modern firearms for like 10 years. Yeah, and, 2013. Yep. And the, the, the uh, 365 just got added, right? This week. Yep. yep. So we're, people in California will be able to purchase a, a SIG 365 finally. It will be modified to California standards, though, because it's not safe when you buy them in another state. Oh, so the, <laughs> yeah. the, bar have, the barrel will be plugged? <laughs> pretty much. It'll have a Mac disconnect. You know, we, we, we get good California folks come out, take classes at Gunsight, and they'll be in our pro shop, and they're looking at some of the cool guns we've got in there, and that's the question we ask them. Wait, where do you live? Yeah. I'm sorry, you can touch it here, but you can't take it home with you. Right. Yeah, well, I'm, oh, I'm, that's a nice looking gun. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy the uh, I'm just happy the Colt Python with the six inch uh, barrel was on the roster. <laughs> out here, you know? <laughs> but um, yeah, you won that, didn't you? I did. Yes, actually, at the Gunsight Alumni Shoot this so, year. So jealous. So um, let's see. Was that was that the one where you did you split the card with that one, or was that uh, one of the other events? No, that was next. I think I, I had to. What did I do? I hit a uh, target at a hundred yards with that one. Oh yeah, yeah. The one you hit the Tannerite at one hundred. So uh, uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's it was. Uh, that was nice. I was. Uh, I was happy with that. And because um, I was thinking and, too that I, you know, I don't know how many people actually tried that. And then I was thinking yeah. of the ones that tried it, there couldn't have been that many that hit it. So I'm, I'm guessing the yeah. uh, the raffle ticket hat probably couldn't have been too crowded there. No, no, it wasn't. You know, and well, on on the gas match, the money our our instructors donate their time and travel. We donate the ranges, and the monies we raise go to a five hundred one c three called the Jeff Cooper Legacy Foundation, and that's run by the Cooper family. And they can get scholarships to gun site from the Jeff Cooper Legacy Foundation. We raised over thirty thousand dollars this year at the gas match. Wow. Yeah, let me just expand on that, too, a little bit more. For people who aren't familiar with it, the, the gas match is open to any uh, student, right? You have to take the 250 class and anything uh, other than that. Yeah, uh, any any three-day three day or more pistol class. Okay, great. And um, they set it up. There are eight stages. And then because uh, Gunsight is what Gunsight is, there's so many sponsors there, like Colt and a bunch of other companies, that there's side matches there. Uh, because, again, the idea is to you know have some fun and raise some money with it as well. And um, the side match that I shot for the Python, it was $10 a shot, and you had to hit the target at 100 yards out. And then if you hit it, then your name got entered into a, um, a raffle. Well, you got the big satisfying kaboom also. No, no, I'm sorry. No, you I didn't get the kaboom. I got, I got a ting. You just had to hit the steel. Yeah, you had to hit the steel. Yeah. <laughs> but I did, I did shoot for the, uh, the Tannerite. And that was right next to me. I did shoot for the kaboom, yeah. but I missed the kaboom slightly. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, they have those side matches. They're a lot of fun, and they help raise a lot of money. Uh, and, again, like you're saying, that money goes to send people to gun site that wouldn't ordinarily be able to go. Uh, so I think How do you qualify? The, the, the people that, who, who, get a, uh, who benefit from that, how do, you, how do they qualify? Like, well, you, you go to the website, Jeff Cooper Legacy Foundation. Mm -hmm. And you read their what they say, but they're old school. They're sort of like us guys. They require a written essay. Oh. You have to write them why why you want to come to Gunsight and how it would how it would benefit you, and importantly, how you would come back and spread the word of the modern technique. If you're if you're somebody that goes in harm's way, law enforcement, military, uh, they give a, some consideration there. If you're an instructor, they give, give consideration there. Um, and so you write your essay, and then the family, the two daughters and a granddaughter, review those, and then they make the decision as to whether or not, and they pay your tuition. 
you still got to pay your ammo and travel and so on, but that means you've got skin in the game, and that's an important thing. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Very cool. Yeah, like I said, you stick with me. I'll I'll teach you. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I feel like I'm, you know, sitting on the floor Indian style in front of a fire, while uh, you know, just (laughs) telling stories. You're teachable. Well, well and, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a great way to get to get people in there. To, and you mentioned the 250 class, which is the basic handgun class that they uh, they still require everybody to do first, no matter what your background is. Because I think uh, you had a great story with that when you first went there. I think your first class you took there, and you actually uh, you called in, and uh, Jeff Cooper actually yep. answered, right? I, and I how, did. How did um, that go? I, I was. I was a lieutenant on the sheriff's office. I was a SWAT guy. I was a firearms instructor. I'd been to Masada. you been Ray Chapman. So I call up, and Jeff Cooper happens to answer the phone. And I said, well, this is who I am. These are my bona fides, and I need to take the intermediate pistol, not advanced. And he said, nope, that's not the way we do it here. You'll start with 250, and he hung up on me. <laughs> and I thought, well, you old curmudgeon. I probably swore, too, but... Um, <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, he was right. I didn't know what I didn't know, and we still require that, uh, whether you're coming as that brand-new gun owner or whether you're an agent with the CIA. Um, uh, we require that because we've got to get you well-grounded in the modern technique of the pistol, and, we're, and our basic is far more than basic. Hey, Riverside and San Bernardino. Even with the Bruin case, the gun grabbers are getting even more desperate. Gavin Newsom's 28th Amendment would gut the second. He also just signed SB2 that prohibits concealed carry everywhere. AB28 adds an 11% tax on guns and ammo. So self-defense would be priced out of reach for more people. Let's face it, all these laws disarm only the people that would use a gun to defend themselves. If you are ready to fight back and do something... To defend your Second Amendment, you need to join Inland Empire Gun Owners is for you. Yeah. When you become a member, you are joining the most effective local Second Amendment advocacy group in the nation. We're growing the 2A community and are getting more pro 2A officials elected. Membership is only $10 a month and joining is super easy. Just go to iegunowners.com slash join. Don't wait till it's too late. All right, so Ken, uh, you know, you said something interesting. Uh, you said a lot of things that were interesting. But one thing in particular was, uh, you know, uh, I, you didn't know what you didn't what you didn't know. And I, I've said that a lot. The, the first time I ever took a formal professional class, it was with a shotgun. It was a four day shotgun class, and I truly did not know what I did not know. Um, I've talked about that a couple times on the air. Um, I thought to myself, what how, what are you possibly going to learn for four days about a shotgun? I mean that. And, and man, I, I, I didn't know what I didn't know. But I also think that gun owners get to a point where they take a few classes, maybe they do a few competitions, and then they don't even realize what they do know. You know, they know, but they don't even know what they know. They've kind of forgotten, you know, and it, be, it, and it becomes, it, be, it just kind of becomes second nature, I guess is maybe the, the term. And they don't realize how other people don't know what they do know. Um, and I don't think we talk about that enough. I don't think gun owners encourage other gun owners to get training nearly enough because it's so important. It gets so ingrained. I don't know. Does any of that make sense, Ken? Absolutely. And, you know, uh, oh, you work at gun site. You must be able to shoot all the time and so on and so on. Yes, I do, but I also go some other places. Uh, Robbie Latham's a friend of mine. Now, there's a name that's known in the shooting world. Uh, I went down uh, with he and Steve Tarani, took a class with him. Uh, Dave Spaulding and so on, because I need somebody to stand behind me with a switch cut off the juniper tree and crack me on the back of the calves and say, do you, do you remember how to do this? And so on. You've got training is ongoing. Your learning is ongoing. If you get to the point where you think you know it all, I, I think you're wrong. Um it evolves, whether it's the technology like pistol-mounted optics or whether it's just you forget that the proper way to press the trigger or to follow through and so on. So you've got to continue to get that, and even more so, take your friends with you so they can shoot and shoot in front of your friends. If you screw up, say, this is what I did wrong, i got to work on this. So don't be ashamed to do that. Own up to it. 
What percentage of folks who show up to your your, your most basic handgun class? What percentage of them are, are showing up with uh, with a uh, with an with a like a red dot on their pistol? Sixty percent or more. Wow, really? Wait, yes, what, what, we're what, seeing more and more. What was uh, we that? even do pistol mounted optic only classes, uh, but um, where we can really get into the weeds uh, on pistol mounted optics. But sixty percent of the guns we see in our our regular pistol classes are not iron sided guns anymore. And what percentage of people who show up at the pistol mounted optics class have a pistol mounted optic? No, I'm just kidding. Well, so uh, how many of them yeah. know how to use it <laughs> when they come kidding. in? How that's the that is the exact question. Yeah. How many people really know how to use it? And it's just like you said a few minutes ago. I got there and thought, what can I really learn in four days? Oh my gosh, look what I learned in four or five days and mm-hmm. what I can do with this pistol mounted optic. When we put tape over the far side of the optic mm-hmm. so you can't see through it and so you're making yourself leave both eyes open and realize, gosh, I'm still getting decent hits. Mm. Um just things as simple as that. Um it, it, it's stunning. I, I know it was for me. I'm a dinosaur, right? I, uh, son, here's your Model 15 Smith & Wesson revolver and a Remington 870, the Keys patrol car. Be real careful. So I've seen a lot of evolution. And when I've been making myself evolve over to these pistol-mounted optics, it, it's, uh, I'm, I'm just taken aback by how much I've learned. So let's say three years ago. So it's 60% of people showing up with a pistol-mounted optic. And my... I have two carry guns. I have a 19 and a 30. Um, I probably carry the 19, I don't know, maybe 75% of the time, the 30, 25% of the time. Uh, you know, it depends on what matches my outfit best, really. I got to coordinate. I'm a slave to fashion. You know how it is, Ken. Well, the accoutrements are the mark of the man. Really, truly. But uh, the 19 has a red dot on it. The 30 does not. Uh, so, okay, so you're saying 60% of people that show up have a, have a red dot. Three years ago, was it 60% or what do you think it was? No, no, it was 20% maybe. Isn't that amazing? I, mean, I, I think it's great. Yeah, it is. But think back 25 years ago with carbines. Yeah. When they started showing up, what's that orange juice can on the top of your <laughs> rifle there, son? Real men use iron sights. And now if you don't show up with a an optic on your carbine, it's like, ooh, what are you doing? Um that's where we are today with the pistol mounted optics have evolved so much they're robust they're reliable they're accurate um as long as you're willing to spend the money on getting a quality product um and it, it makes a difference i wear trifocals now and at a distance oh my gosh i feel like i'm almost cheating when i'm shooting that steel you were talking about a hundred with your python um, I almost feel like I'm cheating with that pistol mounted optic on there at a distance because it helps me in my old eyes. Well, now, and the other the other thing with that too is because I switched to um, I switched to an optic on my carry gun a year or so ago, but knowing you know your equipment or understanding your equipment because something I found out um, where we teach at the range where we shoot, uh, there's some steel targets that are up kind of on the side of a hill. And what I discovered was later in the afternoon when the sun starts to get near the edge of that hill, if I try to shoot up at that high steel target, it washes my optic completely out. I can't see, because of the glare, I can't see the optic. I can't see the front sight. I can't see anything like that. And um, it's good to know that kind of stuff on your carry gun because I didn't realize that before. Absolutely. I've never run into that, you know, because I shoot my, my 19 nowadays. I shoot at matches. And um, so I've never seen it happen there. It's never happened at the range, but only, you know, with the sun at the right angle. And that's something I did not realize. I didn't even think about that until it happened. Um, the, you know, the old saying, if it ain't raining, we ain't training. It's it's not always going to be sunny and 70 on a golf course green when you get into that gunfight. That's the other You've thing, too. You've got to be able to tra- <laughs> you got to train in all those adverse conditions, whether it's the sun's in your eyes, the sun's not in your eyes. Um, you, you're, no you're sweaty, all. you're wet, all those things. And I did get to shoot in the pouring rain with it last year and the optics fine in the rain. <laughs> it's the yeah, sun. You want a closed emitter. The closed <laughs> emitter really helps. You know, the, uh, uh, I was actually, we were talking about that. I don't know if it was last week, two weeks ago, but a lot of people, especially when, when, uh, oh, like early two thousands, late nineties, when Glock started, started to become popular, um, you know, there were a lot of guys that were still stuck with 1911s. Um, they, you know, that was like, well, you go to, stuck with, well, 
Okay, I'm sorry. But there were a lot of, if you went to a match, if you went to an IDPA match in the late 90s, like nine out of 10 guns were 1911s. And then by. God bless. God bless them all. (laughs) And then by like the 2010s, nine out of 10 are Glocks. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm off a little bit. Yeah, but now, now the STIs and Staccatos and all of a sudden 1911s are cool guy guns again. I, I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, but I, I, there was like this attitude of like, well, if you don't have to take the safety off and you don't have to engage, you know, a safety, you don't have to do that. Yeah, but, 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 but you're not really shooting. You know, a Glock is, it was like a Glock was too easy to shoot. You weren't really a gun guy if you weren't shooting, you know, and, 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 you know, having to take all these, you know, take all these things into consideration. And I just never get, I don't, I don't get that. I don't, I don't, I completely disagree with that. I, the easier it is for me to defend myself, the better, you know, and I'm not, I don't want right. to, not necessarily, this isn't a Glock versus 1911 comment, but I mean, you know, I, I, I want every advantage I can possibly have. So these red dots, I know there are people that are kind of stuck in that same mindset of like, well, you should use iron sights because what if a, this happens and a, that happens and a, there's all these different blah, 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 blah. I think all this technology is really great. I think the, the, the red dots are, are clearly the wave of the future and, and they seem to be getting better and better. Well, I'll give you a good example. I shot my, it's called Leosa my retired officer's qualification mm-hmm. this last week, Oh yeah, auto pistol and revolver. And on the auto pistol, I had a pistol-mounted optic on a 1911, a combat commander. The battery box failed <laughs> about halfway through my qualification. But you know what? You, you, you play the cards you're dealt with. You, you learn in your training how to deal with that. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to try to make a headshot at 25 yards, but I can keep on those body shots, and I still pass just fine. So it goes back to the training we were talking about a little bit ago. Even if you do have the technology and it fails, it doesn't fail very often, but Murphy's Law, um, it did, but you just drive on. Did you have co-witness sites? Uh, not with that gun. No. I do want a couple of my other ones, <laughs> but this is, an old, this is an old steel combat commander, and, and uh, I just don't. So you, you, but you, you kind of bore sight it. You mm-hmm. use the TV screen to look through. Right. And uh, you use the shoulders of the targets with the with the, the sides of the TV screen you're looking through, and, and, and you can still make it happen. Good for you, and that really speaks to your training and the amount of time that you put into it. Well, thank you. Thank you. It, it worked, and that's that, so that made me feel better that this is what we teach, and it, I, I just showed you it does work, or I just showed me it does work. I don't train enough. I absolutely, I'll, I'll just, I'll be truthful with everybody. I do not train None enough. None of us do. I absolutely am counting on outperforming my abilities when the emergency happens. <laughs> I know I'm going to rise Remember, to the you, occasion. You, you don't rise to the occasion. You default to your level of training. Yeah, well, then, we're, then I'm in big trouble. <laughs> 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 well, that's awesome, Ken. Get my, let me get my python stand down there at 100 yards. I got this. <laughs> got I'm just going to have to hang out with Joe more often. So just in case I get in, anything goes down, I'll just, here, Joe, take care of it. I'll be ready. <laughs> I'll be, Thanks for I'll, having me on, on again. All Thank right, buddy. Great job. Again. Hey, the fight for Second Amendment is also happening in Orange County. Orange County gun owners lead the fight on the city and county level to defend and protect your, uh, your self-defense rights. How do they do it? Well, they do it by fundraising and getting local pro-gun candidates elected. Become a member today. Go to ocgunowners.com slash join and join the growing number of responsible gun owners stepping up to defend our Second Amendment rights. That's OCGunOwners.com. Winners, prizes, and events. Subscribe and win. Subscribe to our email list and win some swag. This week's winner is... Joe Finnell. I hope that's said that right. Okay. Joe, email prizes at gunownersradio.com to claim your T-shirt or hat. And thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for listening. So, again, email prizes at gunownersradio.com to claim your T-shirt or hat. I wonder what stops people. I think if I were listening and I wanted a free T-shirt or a hat, I'd just, I'd just say I was Joe. I'd be like, hey, I'm too. a winner. <laughs> yeah, you always wonder about that. Yeah. By the way, I got about 10 compliments on the new Gun Owners Radio hat. I like it. I love it. I think, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Rich. That's right. Okay. I think <laughs> he did a really, I think Rich really, did a great job. I thought so too. Are they up on the website? Uh, yeah. the one, the camouflage one, the limited edition. The trucker hat. The trucker hat. You know, those big trucks with wheels. No, that's, that's <laughs> San Diego County gun owners. 
the trucker hat San Diego County gun owners. Oh, is it? Well, that's a cool the, hat too. It is a cool hat, but the but, radio hat's even better. Yeah, the radio hats with the with the uh, yes, uh, both I, are cool. I could have sold it. Why didn't you? Because I it's my hat, and I know how hard it is to get something out of Rich. <laughs> well, I think they're up on the if you. Sorry. He's tight, dude. He's tough. <laughs> he runs a tight. Yeah, I had man. to sit there and beat him up just to get the one I got. <laughs> no, they're really His, and they're so well made. You know, I hate are. cheap hats. I learned that lesson early. The first round of uh, merch, with that plastic thingy with, on the back. Well, the first the first round of merch with San Diego County gun owners was horrible. Low quality, yeah, and it was like, well, I'm not buying that. Yeah. So, then you went to Five Eleven Tactical for the shirts, yeah, which then, was yeah, the best. We've, we've so far, uh, we, we've 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 come a, a long way. Yeah, but if you go to GunOwnersRadio.com, you can purchase the new, very cool Gun Owners Radio hat. It's got the logo. There are a lot of different colors. It's very very cool. You would have got one if you were here last week, Alicia. <laughs> Ooh, <They're> really <laughs> nice. So, uh, speaking of Orange County gun owners, Orange County, we have a town hall on November 9th, which is coming up here. That's this week, uh, Thursday, at the Dana Point Community Center. Uh, it's going to be a very cool event. Uh, I need to RSVP, though, so go to orangecountygunowners.com uh, and uh, register. Register uh, guest speakers, a lot of good information. Again, what we're going to talk about is how crime has spiked in California, uh, how it has to do with many of the... Public policies that uh, have been implemented in California, and what how the, what does that look like for for Second Amendment? You know what it, what it, what does that have to do with the Second Amendment? We're going to talk all about that. We've had a series of these events; they've all gone very very well. So, um, if you're listening and you have maybe have no inter- experience with Orange County gun owners, maybe you only have listened to the radio, maybe you've thought about getting more involved, then go to orangecountygunowners.com. And RSVP, or go check it out on Facebook as well. Um, email us, RSVP, come join us Thursday night. It's very, very cool. You know, it's funny. I was talking to somebody who is just, uh, how would I describe it? They're they're just kind of coming around to being pro-Second Amendment. Um, they were maybe a little leany. They were kind of leaning the other way, you know, and now they're coming around to it. As like a functional issue, it's not a hobby. It's not wow, this is cool, or hey, that's a neat looking gun. It's more of a I need to protect myself. Mm-hmm. So she was coming around to it, and uh, she said, you know, it's interesting. And she tends to support Democrats. Um, her, you know, her politics tends to be left of center. Um, and uh, she was saying, she said, you know, all these folks, all these Democrats that that she hangs out with, she said they're all anti-gun, unless. Your Gaza, <laughs> Israel, uh, uh, the Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Then they're very pro gun. Mm-hmm. They take our tax money and they buy ARs for them, you know. But they yeah. uh, they want to take you know her AR away, sure. her guns away, her quote unquote weapons of war. I don't know if you saw Fox local Fox last night, but Mike Levin, uh, who is uh, he's a congressman in he he covers the district that it's like North County and then it goes up into Orange County. Mm-hmm. It straddles the. The two counties, it's about three quarters San Diego and one quarter um, Orange, and he had an anti-gun rally, town hall, blobity blobity crapity crap uh, last night. So Fox lo- local Fox reached out, you know, for comment or whatever. But you know, he kept using this whole weapon weapons of war thing. Oh, sure. He said he said he's pro Second Amendment, so we, sh- we really shouldn't worry everybody. He said, it. <laughs> "Well, we are going to take away all your guns." He said it. He said I mean, he's pro Second Amendment, but. He thinks we should get weapons. What's his armor. idea of Second Amendment then? Yeah, exactly. Like, what's he yeah. talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? Well, that stuff works, though. I mean, that's, you know, that, that goofy weapon of war thing. I mean, because, again, like you're saying, most people don't know. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got the real hardcore, you know, crazies all the way to the left. And, you know, you're not going to change that mind anyway. But then you've got a lot of people in the middle that just just don't know. Like I was saying, I'm I'm relatively new to it. If you'd have talked to me 10 years ago, you know, I would have said, well, why do people need military because military cause, grade because you don't know you know it's just a lot of people don't know that's why the education thing i think is so important i think when if you could make people just sit down and okay just listen to this you know here here these are the facts 
you know, I think a lot of people would be a little bit more reasonable. And like we're mentioning with Ken too, it's getting it's going to be more and more dangerous. I mean, we we have not had we haven't had a southern border in what three years now. Mm-hmm. Um, right. People that would hurt us from other countries are already here. Oh, hundreds of them, here. maybe thousands of them. Well, they so just, it's just a matter of time. On TV the, uh, the other night, they went out on the, in the streets of New York, and they interviewed people, and they said, "Do you believe in you know Are you pro uh, Hamas or Palestinian?" They go, "Yes." Okay, so you're okay with Sharia law. You're okay with, you know, eliminating homosexuals. And I said, well, no, of course not. Which tells you they haven't done their homework. And the same thing with an assault weapon. I'm so sick of people calling them assault weapons. That's what I'm saying. But they're not. If you don't know somebody who shoots or owns guns or something, you don't know. You're going to believe what you hear. Yeah, so where do you get And a bump stock is everything. (laughs) And you get information from the news and from movies and from movie stars. And, of course, it's wrong. But, I mean, that's a big problem. That whole military-grade thing popped up maybe like 10 years ago. And I always thought it was Mm -hmm. funny that a lot of gun owners were offended by it. Because they were like, military, my AR is way better than military grade. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, there you go. He buys no the kidding. cheapest yeah. thing on a market. Yeah. Gosh, mine's way better than that. <laughs> That's but good. You know, if you I had heard that. Yeah, one. like, oh my gosh, don't insult my AR that way. You know, the uh, it's interesting, though, to kind of take it take it a couple of steps further. Like, okay, all right, so you, you want to ban guns based on the fact that they were made for the military or they're used by the military mm-hmm. or they're used for war? Is that what it is? Yeah, okay, all right. Well, then what? What handgun would we have left? You know, what handgun? A Walther P twenty two. I mean, but even then, it pretty much functions because you know, okay, well, no Glocks, no nineteen elevens, mm-hmm. you know, no no Beretta ninety two, mm-hmm. and then but then you got to go, okay, but then let's let's pick a gun that isn't used by any military. I don't, I don't even know what that would be. Maybe like a an XD. I don't think any military has used XD. No, 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 no. Maybe no. Spring, Springfield XD. But, but how is a Springfield XD significantly different from the other guns that you that are? You know what I mean? If you walk them through this whole idea, it doesn't um, make sense. And so that's really what I hammered home last night. Uh, with local Fox, when they when he you know brought up this ridiculous you know military grade thing, it's like look these are normal fire. He's just it's just another word for a gun, mm-hmm. you know. So you're just banning guns. Okay, uh, symposium. Uh, that's the that was the show we put on at the Gun Show. Want everybody to know to go to Gun Owners Radio's YouTube channel and check out Sheriff Martinez's videos released on Saturday. Check out what she had to say. I got to tell you, she got a big round of applause, a lot of compliments on what she had to say. Um, so check it out. Go to Gun Owners Radio on uh, our, our, our YouTube channel and check that out. See you later. Hey, is there a better tool that empowers a woman to defend against an attacker that's bigger and stronger? Nope. That's why it's so important for women to learn how to defend themselves with the most effective self-defense tool ever invented. For women led by women, the Not Me program is designed to help with training, purchasing a gun, and getting a concealed carry permit. And guess what? It's totally free. Totally. To, to sign up, go to notmesd.org. So we're going to talk about a couple of uh, court-related items here. Um, we're going to start with uh, the court upholds Illinois uh, weapon ban. Uh, uh, noting military guns aren't for everyone is what they said. This is an article from everybody's favorite MSNBC, which I know we all watch MSNBC. Joe, you watch MSNBC. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Wouldn't miss it. (laughs) Uh, A federal appeals court ruled Friday that Illinois' ban on a range of semi-automatic weapons is constitutional. Uh, See, striking out a challenge to the law, which passed earlier this year, to one decision, the court affirmed the constitutional right to bear arms, but noted that, quote, even the most important personal freedoms have their limits. Judge Diane Wood wrote for the majority, there is, quote unquote, there is a long tradition unchanged from the time when the Second Amendment was added to the Constitution, supporting a distinction between weapons and accessories designed for military or law enforcement use and weapons designed for personal use. The legislation now before us respects and relies on that distinction. Now, here's what's interesting about that. There's a bunch that's interesting about Mm -hmm. that. Number one is she's looking at Bruin, this judge, you know, text, history, and tradition. Well, no, the the dissenting judge was. (laughs) Mm -hmm. No, no, this lady. She's Uh looking at Bruin, right? 
and she's making her wrong opinion try to fit into Bruin. So that's why she said, oh, there's a tradition of, of, uh, of uh, you know, distinguishing between civilian arms and, and military arms. Well, there's a trend. We hear, so, she's but talking about weapons of war and but, disarmament. But that's why she chose the, those mm-hmm. words, right? Mm-hmm. She's going, oh, tradition, right? So she's trying to fit her BS into, into the right. reality. Number one, what's that tradition? I'm not aware of that tradition. Mm-mm. What is she talking about? No, they didn't start banning any of that kind of stuff. I mean, as as far back as you can go, what it would be the NFA, I guess, would be the farthest back so you yeah, can like go 68. with machine guns, and that was aimed or at thirty gangsters, something, thirty four yeah. or something like that. But um, and it and it wasn't. They weren't distinguishing between military and non military. No, in that no, that was just that was machine guns because gangsters were using them all over the place. So that was their right. their response to that. But that's not a a widespread tradition, nope. I think, uh, especially since, you know, from from when the uh, Second Amendment was written and then when it was accepted. So what it was accepted, uh, the 14th Amendment applied that to the states in, what, 18-something? Yep. So, I mean, that that's okay tradition. You're talking about you went back to 1934 and found a thing, and now you're saying that's a longstanding tradition? And it isn't even the right thing. You know, the other thing, anybody that's ever visited, uh, like, Williamsburg in Virginia, where, where it's like a living museum, and they show you how, how, how people lived in the 1790s, um, and they have a gunsmith there, a guy that makes... Um, guns? Uh, well, he makes guns, but, uh, like, the same way they did back in the 1790s. Mm-hmm. You, you know, a musket, if you had the choice... You know, if you went back to 1790 and you had the choice between what this gunsmith was making for civilians to hunt deer with and a musket that the British were using to conduct war with, I guarantee you, you would pick what they were making for civilians. Mm-hmm. A musket was a big, you know, it was, it was heavy. A, well, it was a, it was a step above like a blunderbuss. It was far more like, you know, a big, huge, uh, you know, uh, uh, shotgun. You well, know. that's true. And the, the British learned that lesson the hard way, right? Because I think uh, the Americans were shooting them at a much greater range yeah. uh, well, than they could shoot a, back at. But well, wearing a red <laughs> coat doesn't help either. <laughs> so what I'm, but what I'm saying is the, the, the civilian arms were far more you know, effective than the military arms at the time. I mean, it's, you know, it's completely untrue. The other thing, though, is, and I think that this is a lesson for us to learn. I've talked about this in the past. I don't like this whole thing where it's like, oh, no, 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 no. An AR that a civilian buys is so completely different from an M16. I don't like that. It's not that different. They've made, it, they've made it, it unsafe. That's how it's different. It's not that different, and we need to fight for it. I need the firearms that a person uses in a military setting. That's the point of the Second Amendment so that I can become – you know, or function as a you know as a well regulated militia when the time comes. I don't think it's a good idea. I never thought it was a good idea for us to go. Oh no 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 mm-hmm. no no no. It's it's five five six is a much smaller caliber than your deer rifle. It's not as powerful. You don't understand. It's not as. I don't think that's a good idea. And and this person, this judge, is just use that against us. Mm-hmm. So let's talk. Let's do a little devil's advocate thing here. Sure. Um. So with the if we go back to the the NFA thing and the ban on machine guns because that this judge mentioned that too, yeah, which mm-hmm. I, I thought was was actually kind of funny. <laughs> with uh, it, you could easily make this an uh, an automatic by using a bump stock, which I thought was hilarious. Do you so even could, know what that is? Could do right. that with a rubber band, right? Yeah. But um, and it's not automatic with a bump stock. No. But again, you know the argument about okay, there should not be any restriction really on you know on law abiding citizens owning firearms. But if you talk about, you know, fully automatic, um, for one, most people would not want that because it's a huge waste of ammunition. I mean, Mm -hmm. and and it has a specific use for, I mean, the military uses that for suppressing fire, basically. Right. Right. Because, I mean, they're not using it for anything else and they have to carry everything they're shooting. Right. So, I mean, they don't use it for anything other than that kind of stuff. So. What about the bans on that? Because um, well, I, I think that she in, in this situation, if if you know if if you if you set this whole thing up properly, if you knock the dominoes down in the right order, what she really has done is made the case that the NFA and other laws are are actually unconstitutional because they really aren't tradition mm-hmm. in the United States. Like you said, it it didn't come out. You know, until 90 years ago, and we live in a country that's 200 plus years old, 200 and almost 50 years old. So I think that if if done correctly, if argued correctly, if like I said, if you knock the dominoes down in the right order, 
I think she's actually made the case that, hey, you know what? All those, all those uh, laws that you're, you're, you're pointing to as tradition really aren't. It's really not tradition. It certainly doesn't live up to text or history. Um, so uh, all those laws are, are, are unconstitutional for that very reason. You know, but the thing is, is you know, they talk about how gun uh, advocates, Second Amendment folks, we, we never compromise. And that's just not true. We've compromised for 100 years. You know, we've said, all right, okay, you know what? You're going to ban full auto? Okay, fine. Okay, we'll compromise. Oh, you're going to make us go get a license before? Okay, okay. You're going to make dealers have a license? Okay, okay, we'll compromise. And mm-hmm. now it's gotten to the point where we're like, all right, you know what? Now we got to go back and, 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 and really truly undo the things that we were being, quote, unquote, reasonable about. Well, you, you know what a compromise is, right? A compromise – is just uh, something that's going to be a loophole two years later. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that has to yeah. be closed, you know. So it's, uh, it's – it's, I think that they're you – know, we're right in the middle of it, so it's hard to see, but they're going too far. And so now we're going to go back – the pendulum's going to go back the other mm-hmm. – our way, you know. Probably – I think – I'm going to dare say that 15 years from now, we're going to be even better off than we were – like 30 years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're going to undo a lot of the things that we kind of lived with over the last 20, 30 years. And we're like, okay, fine. We're not going to fight that. But now, because they're making these asinine arguments like this judge did, mm-hmm. uh, I think that she she painted herself in a corner. But I do think, I, I on record, big mistake, I don't think we should uh, try to fool the anti-gunners into believing that the ARs that we want to own are any less lethal or any less mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. than uh, than what we need to be able to have what's considered a well-regulated militia. I think that's a mistake. Let, let's move on real quick. So the other good news, that was not good news. However, it creates a split. Mm-hmm. You know, you have one uh, district court that is saying they're, they're, they, uh, bans are constitutional, and of course now you have the Ninth Circuit that's saying they're constitutional. But see, that's what you need, though, because that's what the Supreme Court look around. at, right? They, Ex- exactly. They, yeah. they hear cases where there's conflict in right. those decisions in the lower courts, so that's good, really. Who would have thought that, what is it, the Fifth? The Fifth is the one that's saying that it's constitutional ban, and the Ninth saying that it's unconstitutional. Who would have thought that? The Seventh, the Seventh. Seventh? Yep. Okay, seventh, so yeah. who would have thought that? Mm-hmm. It should, usually probably would have thought the other way around if you right. were guessing you know, five, 10 years ago. Right. B&L Productions, better known as uh, Crossroads of the West, that's the gun show that was at Del Mar for, what, mm-hmm. 30 oh, really? years, um, just ruled that the ban on uh, gun shows at state, on state property is – Unconstitutional. It's well, they, right. they didn't rule, but a judge ruled. A a ju- I'm sorry. You're right. A, <laughs> let's say, back man, this up. Big wavos. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's back this up. What happened was there was an injunction. The judge said, yeah, you know what? These people have a case to make. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're, we're going to block the uh, enforcement of this ban on gun shows on state property. So that's a good sign. It's not a final decision. They're still going to have to go through, you know, but the judge said, look, uh, state property, you need to start working with them on, on future dates right now. Now, great news, right? Yep. Extremely good news. However, uh, everybody needs to be aware this doesn't affect Del Mar yet. It, it, Orange County is going to have a gun show soon. Uh, Why not Del Mar? Ventura is going to have a good, good question. So, uh, Del Mar, actually, there was a separate bill. There was a separate assembly bill. It was actually authored by now Mayor uh, Todd Gloria, but at the time he was Assemblyman Todd Gloria, that specifically addressed Del Mar. Um, so the way, basically the way court cases work is they are so specific um, that this really affects the other legislation that came out that uh, was a widespread ban on all state property Uh, But there's still this uh, other uh, law that only affected Del Mar. So now what they have to do is they have to go in and say, hey, this other thing happened with the other state property. Mm -hmm. This should also apply to Del Mar. I don't know if that's going to – and by the way, there's no guarantee. They might get a different judge. That different judge might disagree and say, nope, I'm Mm -hmm. not going to block the enforcement of this. Mm -hmm. Um, So a lot of things could happen. They might – their attorneys might just decide, hey, you know what? We're going to wait till we fully win, you know, and then come back. So this might happen next week. This might happen next year. This might happen five years from now. Uh, so the good news is it's a really, really great decision by the judge. 
Uh, the neutral news is we're not done yet, and the bad news is it doesn't affect Del Mar yet. Right. So all very important points to well, make. Well, in a way, you would just assume it. I mean, don't you want to keep your gun show? Yeah, well, uh, all the gun I, shows. I, I don't know. That's something we got to address. That's, that's actually really – it's something we kind of talked about. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we going to do? Because we have a gun show Be careful on private, what you wish for. Well, I, I listen, the Second Amendment is what I wish for. Mm-hmm. So whatever's best for the Second Amendment. But March – the first weekend of March, we're going to have a gun show on private property. It's a different venue. Well, we'll de- you'll definitely hear about it. We're going to announce the heck it. out of it, and you're going to love it. Hey, a lot of companies waste an enormous amount of money on marketing. The design is excellent, the photos are beautiful, and your website looks great. But it's just not getting customers. Why? Because you don't have the words to make people buy. But now you can fix that with SageTree. SageTree can help you find the words that make it easy for your customer to understand what you do and how to buy from you. Stop wasting money today and schedule a call. Getting started is real easy. Visit sagetree.com and click on the schedule an appointment button at sagetree.com and click on the schedule a call button. All right, Joe, the floor is yours, my friend. What are we talking about? Some kind of blog. All right. So we'll talk about, uh, yeah, I guess uh, this was uh, last week's, I think, article. Um, but uh, I wrote about the people of California. Are we citizens or are we subjects? Um, Good question. So, uh, you know, it's like uh, what do we say in the defense world, right? If you look like food, you're going to be eaten. <laughs> so, you know, it's like if you look like a subject, you act like a subject, then don't be surprised when they treat you that way. Yeah, really. Um, because, you know, we're supposed to be citizens out here. And, uh, you know, and actually through a uh, – just for the Braveheart fa- uh, fans, you know, I say, well, what's next? Prima nocta? And, uh, <laughs> you know, because, uh, I mean, the, the way – you know, what these uh, politicians do out here, you know, we're supposed to be, um, what are we, a, uh, we're a uh, constitutional republic, yeah. right? So we're supposed to, we elect representatives. And so, you know, the people elect the representatives and then the representatives are supposed to govern us, you know, guided by our constitution, which doesn't real, I mean, you know, you can make a reasonable case out here, especially out here in California, um, but I, you could probably make a reasonable case across the country in, in a lot of places uh, looking at the federal government. But particularly here in California, it's like, you know, things are done to citizens that I, it's hard to believe that most citizens enjoy this. Um, you know, these decisions just get made and it's like, OK, you'll do this, you'll do that. And it's like, oh, OK. And, you know, particularly if you look at gun owners out here, I mean, what we have to deal with. And, um, you know, one of the the things it's like. It looks like um, the politicians out here have have picked a a group of people, gun owners, uh, with whom they disagree, you know, uh, politically anyway or philosophically, and it's like, okay, well, we're we're going to ignore, you know, the United States Constitution, the California Constitution in some cases, and we're just going to do these things to you, and um, you know, if you look at like the the latest thing. Um, a, week or two before this article I wrote about the 15 bills that Governor Newsom signed. And, you know, I, I wrote about them and I summarized kind of the bills and I linked to all of them. So, and I encourage people to go and read them. Don't take my word for it. But there's not a one of those bills that does anything productive for the public. I, there, <laughs> there's not one of them that you could say makes makes us safer or impedes criminals or does anything like that. And what they've done is that they attack a group of people, gun owners. And um, what they've done basically is there's another term <clears throat> that they say they, they've othered us is what they've done. Wow. So they've, they've made us <clears> – we're, we're not like them. So it's, it's easier now to attack you know, gun owners because you know, we're the crazed, goofy gun nuts. And uh, so, therefore, you know, they don't deserve the kinds of things that the rest of us deserve. Well, and we weren't organized enough to fight back either. So we became a – it was easy to victimize us. Oh, yeah. No, and that's a – problem. And I say, and I have to watch <laughs> my classes because, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk about San Diego County gun owners just to tell people about it. But it, it it's getting to the point where it really bugs me that – you know, because I'll point out to them, I mean, we have this situation, gun owners, mm-hmm. because of gun owners. Yeah. For 50 years, you did nothing. And you let this go and, you know, because people I, – I see people today in class, you know, I just want to shoot my gun. I don't like politics. Okay, cool. Yeah. The other side likes politics. Politics loves you. And, yeah, and they, they love that. Gavin Newsom loves it when you say you don't like politics. I just want to shoot my gun. So do you know who Anna Kasparian is? 
Oh, I've heard that name. She she's uh she's like the the second to uh, uh she, you know the is a real far left progressive uh show called The Young Turks and she's she's on there. Okay, yeah, I've she's, heard of that too. She's but. way far <laughs> way far left progressive. And I just happened to catch she was on another show, like another podcast. And I I got to tell you, I listen to people I disagree with more than I listen to people I agree with. Mm-hmm. I think it's far more fascinating. Um and I want to know. I want to prepare. I want to know, like, well, what, what, what crap are they trying to deliver? You know, and what, what am I gonna? What do I think about it? And what am I gonna say about it? You know, I, I want to prepare. Anyway, so I'm listening to her, and she, for a half hour on someone else's podcast, went off on Gavin Newsom. How Gavin Newsom, like, he used to be their hero, you know, and and she is disgusted by like every decision this guy's made. And I mean, what, she, what's not to like, what does she like about that? Well, but you'd think someone that was progressive, you know, and, and lefty, you know, cause that's all he's done is mm-hmm. implemented all these progressive left wing, you know, especially anti-gun, uh, uh, you know, uh, politics. Well, we're we're going to be best friends forever with China now. Right. Oh so yeah. I, he's going to go. <laughs> solve, yeah. And, but he, but she, uh, you know, she even said that because of his failures, that she's actually rethinking some of her left wing ideas. Well, good. Which I think is fascinating. Now she didn't actually talk about guns. I don't think at all. And I, I'm pretty sure that if you, if I sat down and talked to her about guns, we'd still disagree on a whole lot, a whole lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting to me that they, you know, Gavin Newsom's the whole, the whole package. He's connected. He's extremely, you know, well spoken. You know, mm-hmm. he's successful. You know, he's effective. He, he. He isn't squishy on their subjects at all. He's very, very mm-hmm. left wing. You know, it's not. He's not. He's not middle of the road in anything, and uh, he's completely destroyed California. <laughs> he's completely destroyed cities in California, and now uh, even some of the some of the more uh, some of the more prominent left wingers are turning against him. But see, and your and your point brings me back to another pet peeve of mine with this stuff too, and, and it's wider than gun owners. It's um, the Republican Party because – well, because <laughs> – They're a pet peeve of mine as well. <laughs> well, what, what you just mentioned, right? Here you have this 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 far left, you know, left-wing right. whatever that I would call it. <laughs> right. But you had this woman right. and, um, you know, and she's unhappy. And, you know, what I ask – and I've asked a number of what I would call prominent um, – you know, Republicans out here, when you talk to a state senator and an assemblyman, and those are fairly prominent Republicans. And I say, okay, what's the plan? Because we're not the only ones suffering out here. Everybody is suffering under these policies. Right. What's the plan to get people like the woman you just mentioned and say, hey, there's another alternative, you know. There's other people here. We have some other ideas. And every single one of these people I talk to, yeah, there's no statewide plan. Nope. You know, aside from, you know, aside from Carl DeMaio is the only guy that, that seems like he has a plan and they don't like him. Yeah. It's like, well, gosh, how are you going to do any – how are you going to be anything except a super minority – if you don't have a plan to approach these people that that are surely unhappy, a lot of these people have to be unhappy. Oh, it's so much worse. I was just talking to somebody that went to the Republican convention for the you know statewide convention, and one of the things they talk about is their platform, their actual written platform, and, mm-hmm. and the different planks in their platform, and what are they going to include or add or edit or whatever. And there was apparently a big effort by uh, Republican leadership to take many of the things in their platform out, including their stance on Second Amendment. Which is was was added fairly recently and is as it's pretty milk toast, <laughs> you know. It's barely supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I can't quote it. I wasn't prepared to quote it. I'm still looking into just exactly what was said and by who. Um, but apparently, yeah, the Republican Party was just like, well, we don't want to stand for all this stuff. See, that's what's hindering us is we're standing for too much stuff. And that's like the Neville Chamberlain approach here. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. <laughs> because it's like uh, – Wow. Know? That's a great reference. <laughs> well, I, I mean what – like I said, if you don't have – got to have something to offer people. And uh, and I don't know where people – like this woman you're talking to, where are you going to go? You know, because uh, I talk well, to people about that. You know, you got two choices. You know what? Here's what she's going to do. And I got to here, – here's, here's something to her credit – that I think a lot of people on the right side of the spectrum need to be ashamed of. Well, you know what she's going to do? She's not going to go anywhere. She's just gonna, she's going to she's going to fight for and and you know quote unquote fix the Democratic Party. She's going to stick with the Democratic Party. She's going to work with them. She's going to make them you know stronger and more effective. You know what she's not going to do? 
She's not going to do like what Ben Shapiro did and tuck his tail between his legs and retreat to another, you know, state like the coward, the yellow bellied coward that he is. You know, I Why don't you so, tell us well, how you really feel. I, I, I am, I, I, I've tried. I've, I've bitten my tongue for years because so many people get so hurt by my, by my opinions of of them leaving California. But oh, it's so disgusting to me that they just, you know, turn tail and leave California. Well, gee, things didn't work out for me, and I'm totally <laughs> scared of liberals. They're big and bad and tough. So I'm going to go to Texas. I'm going to go to Mississippi or wherever the heck you go. But I just think it's so. It's, she is so much more over you by staying and doing what she should do, what a true American should be doing, um, than you cowards who slither out of this state on your cowardice yellow bellies. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourselves. All right. I'll so, get, don't feel better now? Bite my tongue for another couple years. <laughs> oh, take, so. take a roll aid. <laughs> So this woman. So gonna, she's not going anywhere. So she's going to stay and fight. So does yeah. she have like a Republican sister that could do that for uh, no for the Republican Party? No, like you said, all we got is we don't. You know, the the chair, the local part. I mean, it is absolutely pathetic. The, the The Republican Party is little more than the second worst Second Amendment party out there. That's well, that's all what I'm saying. And, and if you don't have a plan, they're not I, the worst. They're the second worst. <laughs> but um, boy. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> now you need to take it. Now look what you did. This is why we. This is why we can only have Joe in about once <laughs> every couple of months. Yeah, exactly. Go fired up. Um, anyway, okay. So, are the people of California citizens or subjects? Um, and uh, that's your blog. It's up on San Diego County Gun Owners Blog right so you now. You can find it there. You can find it on getagrip.substack.com, San Diego County Gun Owners Blog site, our Facebook page. Uh, you have to. You have to scroll a bit for the Facebook page. It's been out there for a week or two. Yeah. You know, if you lose California, you you might live. If you stay but, in California, do you really you think, might die. Do you think the but left- when you're old <laughs> on your bed yeah. and you're dying, yeah. then you'll change. That you know you're going to be ashamed because yeah. they can take they can take your taxes, they can take your pro- they can take everything from you, but they'll never they'll never take my freedom. You know, They'll you, never take it. If you were just on a horse with half of your face painted blue, <laughs> that would be perfect. Yeah. And a kilt. But you know, don't you kind of think that the the left yeah. is getting pretty tired of what their their <laughs> politicians are dishing out? No. Well, okay, so they I don't th- what I think I think that they're looking at results and going, right, that doesn't work. But they're not doing some big drastic um, Well they never will. It's not some big epiphany. They're well, not they, gonna be like, you know what, I'm a Republican now. It's not oh, gonna no. happen. No. They're not going to blame it. But they Look can't what, be happy. Well, I, I know I know friends that are- They're not know, sad. Yeah, they're just like, well, that wasn't- they're gonna, yeah. What's going to happen is they're going to look back in 10 years and they're going to you know what California was doing? That's not real Democrat politics. We, we're going to do it right now. Well, they're doing the same it? thing, but it's going to be right. Yeah. Hey, if you're a gun owner- I am. Good. Man. Me too. What do we do without you guys? Yeah. And if you ever need to use your gun to protect yourself or your loved ones, you need legal protection. Even if you do everything right, even if you're 100% justified, you should be prepared for legal battles after your self-defense battle. We've seen it right here in San Diego where an innocent man showed his firearms, showed, didn't shoot it, showed his firearms to discourage a violent attacker. And he had to spend thousands of dollars. Yeah, he did. And he he had to spend thousands of dollars in legal fees to restore the freedoms and rights. That's why you need firearms legal protection. When you join, you you get uncapped legal protection for self-defense for civil or criminal cases with a 24-7 hotline. Joining is real easy. Just go to firearmslegal.com, click and become a member, use code GOR for a discount. Enjoy the peace of mind knowing that you are protected if you you are ever involved in a self-defense incident. And you get the joy of watching the police officer cry because you're protected. <laughs> we should have this guy on the show. Now that I think about it, he uh, it was it was too bad what happened to him. He's yeah. now covered by I forget who. He's covered by uh, one of the one of the programs here. But uh, uh, he did. He had to, was a lot of out of pocket. He had to go get his CCW back. He had, he lost his firearm. Uh, we should have him on the show and, and see if he wants to talk about it. But one good thing came of this is uh, we now. Got the 
district attorney, to, she has a pilot program, and if there is a defensive gun use situation that does need to be investigated, mm-hmm. they now put it in front of the same group that investigates uh, cops, cops when they're in a yeah. defensive gun use situation. Yeah, so that's, that's excellent. We thank him for his sacrifice. It didn't have to be as much of a sacrifice, but now he had. Now he's covered, so it won't be right. next time. And hopefully, you know, hope it's there called is no next proactive, time. not reactive. That's right. Did you? Were you about to? Were you no, about I, was, I was hey, about burp. to mention exactly what you just mentioned. There so you go. There was some good that came out. Of I that. stole your thunder. thunder really quick. I might. I, I was just st- just making just making sure you thundered. That's <laughs> all, <yeah. laughs> I stole the thunder you were trying to steal from me. <laughs> all right, Sam the Gunman, everybody's favorite segment. Stump my nephew. We found out that Sam, my nephew is extremely good on uh, gun trivia. So if you send in a question, we'll ask him on the air. And if we use your question on the air, you'll get a hat or a shirt. If you stump my nephew, you'll get a cool special Nito prize. He does not get the question in advance. The first time we read it to him on the air is the first time he's heard of it. So a there ne- you go. A Nito prize? Nito. When's the last time you heard that? <laughs> it is Nito. Gosh golly. Gosh yeah. golly, gee wizard. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Sam, you there? Yeah, how are you guys? I'm Nito. That's how I am. Um, okay, That's cool. Great. Well, Joe's in the studio, and uh, I think we're going to have him ask the question. Okay. I didn't know I had to read here, but I, I can up. read. How don't are you, you hate, Sam? Don't you hate that? Show? I'm well. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. But uh, so this will be cool. cool. This will be an honor here. Duel of the bloggers. So let's see. <laughs> Looking at it for the first time, Paul from Chula Vista asks, what are two key innovations of the SIG P365 that's just been added to the California gun roster? Paul from Chula Vista, thanks very much for writing in. Um, I, you know, to tell you the truth, I didn't know it had been added to the roster. Um, excuse me for not paying attention to uh, what's going on with that, but um, that's that's really great to hear. Uh, what are two of the innovations? Um, the... 365 made a big splash when it was unveiled at SHOT, I believe, 2018. You'll have to fact check me on that um, because most pistols of its form factor generally hold between six and eight rounds of nine millimeter. Uh, so it's it's in the same class as uh, like a Glock 43 um, or uh, a Smith & Wesson M&P shield or um, you know, there were there were a handful of other options in that in that size class, but what it did that was special. Uh, one of the things was it held ten rounds in a standard capacity flush fit magazine, and they also have twelve and fifteen rounds, uh, twelve and fifteen round magazines available. Uh, well, for us at least. All right, uh, Sam, you're you yet. you're halfway there. That's part one of the that two is. part answer. Nice. Um, <laughs> The other one is, um, and this isn't new on the P365, but it is an innovation that it carries forward, um, is the modular chassis system. It inherited that from the P320, which inherited it from the P250, which kind of stole it, but don't tell SIG I said that, from the um, Steyr uh, M series, I want to say. So some things never change. Yeah. Nope. So, See, and uh, you've been gone all this time, and he's still <laughs> hitting it out of the park. So that was it. The way it's worded here, it says the fire control unit, like the P320, the fire control unit is a chassis that holds 99% of the internal parts and wears the serial number. So by law, it's the actual firearm. So this feature allows the user to switch frames, slides, and calibers without the need to order parts and are considered additional Firearms. You know, I'm not familiar with the uh, with the 365 because we, we can't get it. Really, mm-hmm. is the reason. And I'm I'm not a huge Sig guy. I'm not against them, but I'm not a huge Sig guy, so I'm not really all that familiar. So this uh, this sounds like a lot of moving parts. You know what I mean? It sounds like something that would like you know. There's a lot more f- to fail. Um, uh, I- am I right, or is it? Or is it? Is it? Does it have a reputation for being? Uh, really reliable or how does that work that that modular chassis system is it is it been rock solid or what's the feedback you're aware of yeah out here on the east coast the 365 uh literally sells itself um people really really want that gun so that's part of why it's so great that it's available in california now and also part of why it's so great it's available is because due to that modular chassis system they only need to have conceivably one part number on the roster 
and you can go go gadget whatever kind of pistol you want out of it all the way from micro compact to approaching midsize um i anecdotally i it doesn't seem to be significantly less reliable than other options in in its same class um at least in in a civilian use case it's just from a perspective of working on it it's just different mm. so like a glock pistol has a total of 34 parts excluding the magazine that's nothing. So uh, a Glock, you can you can take it all the way down to the pins and springs with like kitchen utensils. Uh, very easy to work on. The P365 is easier in some ways, more difficult in others. Um, if you if all you're doing is like detail stripping the slide to change a firing pin or something like that, it's even easier than a Glock. Um, wow. It's you know you can change around the the frame and stuff like that because of you know modular chassis. The only thing is, if you have to get inside the FCU for some reason, you're almost better off, like, don't do this, but you're almost better off throwing it away and getting a, getting a new one. <laughs> wow. Because inside, so, like, it's all unitized, so you don't have to mess with it, but if you do, you're you're out of luck. It's so never complicated the inside box. there. The the 10-round magazine, is that a, it's, it, 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 that must be a, a, it can't be a single stack. Is it is a double stack, or...? It is double stack. So is it as is it a, is it as as big around as a as a Glock or or is it no, uh, slimmer? Um, the the way they designed the magazine, it's very narrow. Um, Glock magazines, just the way they're designed, they're uh, space inefficient in terms of width because they have that plastic shell. Mm. But um, it yeah, it's it's a double stack gun, double stack capacity in the size of a single stack. It's it's barely over an inch wide. Do you know what's the what's the safety on a Sig three sixty five? Is it a button lever? Or what's the what's the deal? It's a, it's a striker. Though, um, they it? come either without a uh, without an external manual safety or with uh, a thumb actuated lever style, uh, sort of in the place you would expect, like from a nineteen eleven or whatever. Do you carry, here, here in California, ours will have a safety. Have a safety. It have the, the thumber. That's a, a roster requirement. Yep. Are you? Uh, do you carry a, a three sixty five? No, I carry a Glock forty three X, which was released uh, sort of to compete with it. It's a little bit taller, top to bottom, um, but it's you know it's just a matter of personal preference. They hold the same number of rounds, and they do the same thing, and they're about the same size. All right. Well, cool, man. So you know that that modularity is a good deal, though, out here mm -hmm. with the roster, because uh, a friend of mine at the range uh, last week saw the uh, GSG makes a, a 22 that's on that 1911 pattern, mm -hmm. and it's a cool little gun. And um, so there was another guy there that had one. I was telling my friend about it, and the other guy had it. Yeah, try this out. So my friend really really liked it, and he went to uh, to Poway to buy it. And they had one in there, and they they had one that was like a a, a the tan colored Cerakote or something on a there. Three sixty five. No, 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 no on this uh, on the oh. GSG. But uh, yeah, he was going to buy that one, but oh, that one's not on the roster oh, because the color is different. <laughs> stupid. It's unsafe. <laughs> so, Welcome uh, to California. Yeah, it's an unsafe color. So having that modularity is nice with the Sig. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool, man. That's a lot of really great information. I, I just again completely. We didn't prepare him in any way. I didn't tell him, hey, go go know as much as you can know about SIGs. Nope. Certainly didn't talk about 365s. Didn't prepare him with the question. You just got about as good a lecture on a P365, which is newly added to the roster, which means you can get it here in California. That's, That's about right. as good a, a review as I've, I've ever heard. I've definitely learned something about the 365. So thank you, Sam. You're awesome, man. You're the best. Well, thanks for having me on, as always. All right. Take care and have a good one. See you. Likewise. Good night, everyone. Thanks for watching this episode from Gun Owners Radio. If you're watching mainstream media, you're not getting the truth about guns and the Second Amendment. Gun Owners Radio is the easiest way to stay on top of the Second Amendment fight, the fight for your self-defense rights. You can watch our live stream on YouTube every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time, or if you're in San Diego, AM 1170, FM 96.1, The Answer. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform. Just do a search for Gun Owners Radio and you'll find our show. Don't forget to support our sponsors. Click on the links in the show notes and support the businesses that support your Second Amendment rights. Like and subscribe to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.